Hello, everyone. Welcome to the August 17th edition of the uh, Chaos Weekly Community Call. I'm Elizabeth, even though my name says Chaos Community there. I'm Elizabeth. I am the community manager. I see some new names, some um, new maybe faces. I don't know. <laughs> um, so welcome. Welcome. We're really glad you're here. Um, and just to reiterate, we don't care if you leave your camera off, totally fine. Uh, if you'd like to turn it on, that's fine too. We're pretty flexible here. So if you would like to interact, you can either um, use the raise hand emoji or you can put something in the chat. We try to integrate that pretty well into the flow of the conversation. So don't hesitate to just drop something in there or, or raise your hand. Um, I hope everybody's doing good. It's been a couple of weeks since I saw you, everyone. Uh, I missed everybody, so I'm glad to be back. Um, Y'all are awesome and you make my day happy. So I'll drop the minutes in here one more time, just in case. Um, if you would like to leave your name in the agenda, that would be great. Um, Cause we do kind of like to keep track of like who's coming to the meetings and stuff. So um, that'd be great, but you obviously do not have to. And then if you would like to tell us one good thing in your life, that would be amazing because the world is not great in a lot of places right now. So um, that would be great to just let us know something good that's going on. Um, let's see here. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. The first one, um, just wanted to update everybody on the chaos, uh, chaos con CFP. We had, I believe, 14 submissions at the end of it. Um, Sophia and Ray, who are on the call today, do you all have anything to add? I think you're going to be the committee that picks, if I'm not mistaken. No, yeah, so I started a Google Doc and some of you may have seen it or Google Sheet to for people in the selection committee to grade them. Um, and then, I mean, we can talk more about this, I guess, in the second half when we have chaos on specific topics. But, um, you know, I don't know the rough timeline and Sophia can jump in here if, if you don't agree, but uh, we can give people, for example, in this on the, on the committee to you know, grade their grade the submissions by the end of the week, for example, and we can have a quick meeting next week to sort of, you know, make a decision on uh, based on grades, like which ones got accepted and which one which one will, will not be. So that's sort of the thinking right now. But I forget, like, do we have a date on when we're supposed to get back to people with decisions or? I don't I'm know. rechecking our post now just to make yeah. sure if we, if we did. He said we would announce this notifications on the 27th. Okay, so in the next week. Yeah, mm -hmm. so if we meet by like early next week uh, after the grading, I guess that should work. So. I think so. Yeah, I think I remember baking in two weeks for review yeah. and discussion. Is there a link of assigned reviews in the chat somewhere? Uh, no, I wasn't, I wasn't going to open that up, uh, but, you know, we can talk about that the second half. Like the okay. other question I had was, you know, I think that form that Sophia created was shared with like five people. Like, I don't know if those five people are the ones uh, that are part of the selection committee or we, I need to, I mean, I was going to include everybody on the, the chaos con channel. Uh, chaos con committee channel like all 13 of them i think but uh wasn't sure if i need to include i'm okay with including all 13 people there or if it's just a subset of that group but i think in the past we had everyone on the organizing committee help with yeah the I, that was my recollection too but i just went to double check so yeah i mean i don't mind having all i mean i think i had columns for like all 13 of them anyways but and then i'll make sure that it's shared with all of them and then so people can start grading or scoring awesome thank you sophia anything we missed or like i think that's sort of what we discussed on slack but yeah, no, I think that that approach makes sense. Um, hopefully in the next, we seem like we have enough. I think sort of the initial debate was whether or not we were gonna extend the deadline, but I think with 14, we are only have a half day. So I think we'll, I think we'll have enough to work with. Um, so I think that concludes our CFP process and we'll have an update for the team in the next few weeks. 
Yeah. And then, I mean, Sophia, you and I can talk about sort of like how we want to like a schedule sessions. Uh, yeah. Mean, we can, yeah. We, yeah, we, and we I can meet. Yeah. We have a tentative idea for a schedule and we have one on right. the website. We had a couple of different formatting sketches and mostly just also wanted to right. see uh, the appetite for people to do longer or shorter kinds of sessions. Right. Um, so I think reviewing the submissions will help clarify the, the format as well. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, you and I can have a quick one-on-one -on -one chat. I mean, other people in this election committee are welcome to join, but we can schedule a half an hour later this week, so. Fine with me. Cool. Yeah, and the past year's past conference we did the rating and then we had one meeting where we talked about okay who's in who is out and then we drafted the schedule during that meeting yeah okay cool and for those who are might be new on the call, um, just for a temporary up leading up to ChaosCon, which is at the end of September, um, this meeting will be a little bit shorter than usual. So we're going to end this meeting at 12, sorry, 12.30 my time, um, half past the hour, wherever you are, um, so that the rest of the time can be used for ChaosCon planning. So we will uh, just to, to let everybody know that's kind of what we're talking about when we say like the second half of the meeting. That's what that means. Um, does anybody have any questions for Ray or Sophia or anybody on the ChaosCon? committee. All right, we will move forward then. Um, the next item is just a brief um, announcement that the office hours that we do on um, Mondays has been switched to biweekly um, to make things a little bit easier for the chaos team to manage. Um, so if you have questions about that, I wasn't really present for those conversations, so I can't give you any other context than that. Um, but if you would like to, if you are a member of the CAS community already and you would like to um, host one of those sessions, they're pretty low traffic, maybe like one or two people max um, pop into those. So um, there's a spreadsheet, there's a link to the spreadsheet we have there uh, where you can just drop your name in. Um, and I am working on a doc that will kind of uh, give you information about what what it is and how to do it and like how to use the Zoom tools and things like that if you're the host. So um, bear with me on that. I'm working on that. It should be done in the next few days. Um, anybody have questions about the office hours, like what they are? No? Okay. All right. We'll move on. Um, another reminder uh, on the metrics freeze, uh, September 1st is the next freeze. So if you are in a working group that has some outstanding metrics that you're working on, just a reminder to try to kind of bring those in for a landing and get those out there before that freeze happens um, on September 1st. And then September 1st uh, through the end of September will be the 30-day public review period on all of the metrics that we have coming up in the next release in October. So. Uh, questions on that? No questions, just super excited. I think we have a few nice metrics for this release. Yeah, same. There's some really interesting ones. Um, we are just flying through this agenda, so good for us. Um, okay, so the next one is about translations. Kevin is not here, but he asked me to pass along some information to you. And I do see that Ritik and Yash are here, so they can probably chime in as well. Um, but he just wants to remind everyone about the, um, the translation guidelines that are being worked on. Uh, there's a link to the doc in the minutes. And um, if you wanna take a look at that, if you're in a working group that has some metrics that are gonna be up for release, um, he just asks that you double check to make sure that there's an, a corresponding issue in the translation repo. Um, and there should be some templates for you to use, even though they're still kind of being developed, um, there is something there for you to use. Um, and then, I don't know, Ritik, Yash, do you guys have anything to add to that? I think you summed it up pretty well. Josh, if you have the uh, the flow, the, the workflow, the chart that we worked on yesterday, if you would like to 
uh, share your screen and show that or add a picture in the minutes. I think that's a really nice way of representing what that workflow for translation is mm -hmm. going to look like. Ritik has the link. Or maybe Ritik can share that. Yeah, I Just can share my screen. Uh, one second. So oh, is this visible? Uh, can you see the chart? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So chart, uh, this flow chart is basically divided into two main parts. The upper one is for the metric working groups and the lower one is for the translations team. So initially, let's say the work group proposed some change. Now these changes can be of uh, two types, either in the metrics or in the focus areas. And they can be like some metric or focus area is added, updated, renamed or removed. So after this, the next thing would be to create an issue in that particular working group. So the label for that issue would be metric release candidate. And uh, for here we will be using an issue template. And this issue will stay open until the metric release process that is in the uh, October, I guess. So from this, we will make a reference issue and we will update this new metric in the website with the label under review. And this uh, issue will also be referred in a new issue uh, that is the metric release node with the label of metric release node. Now, uh, from this issue, we will inform the translation team by creating an issue in the translation community, uh, the translation repository, and refer the metric release candidate issue. So we have a new issue. Uh, for now, we have two languages, Spanish and Chinese. So we will add the language labels. Now, the corresponding translation teams will uh, resolve the issue and create the translation. They will remove their uh, labels. And then we can proceed to create the metric release for that particular language. Any suggestions or comments on the process? I have a question. Um, that first, the gray box, that's uh, the process we were already following, right? Like that, that's not changing, is that correct? No. Okay, perfect. I just wanna make sure, I just wanna make sure. Um, this looks great, this is awesome. So the only thing that we're asking the working groups to do is when they make a change, add a metric, remove one, that they think about, hey, we need to open a translation issue. And to help with that, we have an entry in the checklist. So in the chat, I posted the link to the current version of the checklist. Uh, for that central issue, the metrics release candidate issue that all, all changes have to go through. And there we have the process checklist items. And one of them is to create an issue in the translation repo. And so it, it's really lightweight on the working groups to start adding the translation teams and let them know, hey, there are changes to be translated. So this checklist comes up when we, under in the gray box, when it says uh, create issue after a type of change, and it says create issue, that's where that issue is from. OK, perfect. This yeah. is great. And so this template is what that issue looks like. And so in that issue, we can check off Hey, we did that, we did that, we did that. Uh, we have to add this flowchart to the community handbook, right? Yes, that would be great. Okay. So any final thoughts on this? Sorry, I have one more question. <laughs> do, do, you, do you guys want me to put this in like a newsletter or anything to like help communicate that we have this process and then we have a checklist and like, 
I mean, most people I think who are at the working groups probably know about this already, but if it's something you want me to put in the newsletter, just let me know. I think we can share this with the translations team as well. So they would be aware of the process that would be following to create the issue in their repositories. Okay, so I'll just wait then. And if you guys want me to put it in there, just someone yell at me and tell me to do that. And I will do that. One more comment on this and then I swear I'll stop. <laughs> but the, like seeing it visually like this is so great. Like, cause for the, you know, the first like probably six months I was here, it was still hard for me to visualize how the flow went. So I really appreciate you, you all putting this into like a visual form. I'm a very visual learner. So for someone like me, it's extremely helpful. And, um, and the checklist is just amazing as well. Like the, I'm a very, you know, task oriented. So going down the checklist makes a ton of sense to me personally. So thank you guys for doing that, all that hard work to put that together. It makes it a lot better for everybody. Yes, thank you. Okay, if we don't have anything else on that, we will go ahead and move forward on the agenda. So we have about nine minutes left in this uh, in this part of the meeting. Oh, and it looks like we're at the end of the agenda. So, huh. oh wait, update on the community handbook. Was Is that just adding those translations in there? Whoever put that in? Uh, we published the process in the handbook. And we also have a set of FAQs in case anyone has any doubts. So they can just refer it. Perfect. Thank you guys. Um, well, we have nine minutes left. What do we want to talk about? Anything exciting? What do we want to do with our time? Uh, well, we had tables work on the data ethics last week. I don't know if Georg, you had an exercise for us this week, but we have time. Ooh. Let's pull it up and take a look at that. I always love to see where we are. I haven't looked at this in two or three weeks. Where is that document? Oh, here it is. Let's move it up. And for anyone who might be new to this meeting, um, this is a statement that we've been working on um, for a while in this meeting. And it's a general ethics statement on how people should be using the data that they collect based on our recommendation in the metrics. So <clears throat> it's for the community's use um, to when they start using a metric, it's so that they can have a better feel of like, what do we do with this in a, in a good way? <clears throat> And then what we'll do is we'll, I'm assuming Georg, you want to do like a little working session on the stock? Well, I, I, I think what we did, if I remember correctly, um, we had a, one session with just a brainstorming of topics and things. So that's the top of the document. And then we had a second session where we were working on an outline proposal. So that's the bottom part of the document. And so what I think we can do is go through this content, this outline proposal, and maybe think about filling in more details. And everything that's at the top can be um, inspirational here. I just... So the outline includes some high level discussion of why this document is important. What are some ethical concerns? that we are, we want to raise awareness for, just, you know, so everyone has the same understanding of what the issue is. 
And then we go into a second part where we go through the stages of metrics and we address at each state um, what the challenges are and how we think they can be mitigated. For that first part, I'm just thinking out loud here. So if, if someone else wants to chime in, for that first part, the ethical considerations at a high level, um, do we just want to pull in definitions from the dictionary? Like the English dictionary? Sorry, what was the question? The English dictionary? Well, or, or the British dictionary. Sure. We don't have to reinvent the wheel here. So th that's my thoughts, just looking at the document for next steps. Um, I mean, my, my thought on dictionary definitions is if they're in an English language dictionary from whatever English speaking country you choose, do they need to be defined by us? Maybe a dictionary definition is not the right thing to include here. Um, Maybe we want a, a statement of why that ethical concern is a concern in open source. I think some sort of context around what that term means would be helpful, even if we just link to, you know, somewhere that's more like an authoritative source. So you're, you're talking about the, the things listed in on, under the outline. Yeah, that first block, the ethical yeah. considerations at the high level. There's almost like too many sources that we could point to. Um, I mean, yeah. I, I always have the like the former analyst view, but like we were constantly trying to define things and then claim that our definition was the best one. So like, or something like beyond beyond legal and regulatory bodies, there's going to be a lot of subjectivity. So instead of claiming one, we could also point to variety. If there isn't a definitive legal or government driven definition of something, then potentially we, we just start with like, I don't know, collecting a canonical variation of lists. Again, this is like, again, part of the ambiguity. There isn't necessarily a clear definition of these things because it's somewhat subjective to your own interpretation. Um, sort of a general comment, just looking at this, I'm thinking about, I know you have sort of the like ideas around outputs, um, but reading through the outline specifically, the thing that's really coming out to me is that all of this is to inform your policy and policies that you create around your project, around data handling around your project. Um, and so at a certain point, I do think we should at least state the purpose of this is to help you create better policies, not only to be aware of it, but to inform how you in theory, that's sort of the execution piece is policy documentation. So we we'll probably have to have something like that stated either up front or um, especially as we're coming up with examples and things like definitions or considerations. Um, there's potentially a lot of existing documentation we could point to if we find good examples of how others have handled some of the stickier issues in, in this regard. Not that they want to be referenced here, but I guess for our drafting purposes, we could see what we find and then decide how we want to surface that to the public. I guess this is already public, but 
more formally. <laughs> yeah, because, because that's what people come to chaos for. They, they want to have help with their metric strategy, with their metrics effort. And so, yeah, I agree. I added a sentence here. Purpose of this document is to help set a good data policy for your metrics efforts. And we can probably fill that in a little bit more. So since we're kind of at half past um, the hour, do we want to have that as kind of like an informal action item for everybody to kind of um, do, do a little bit of research on some of these terms and come up with some re references? Or what do you want to do with us? Wait till next week and work on it more? I hate to give people homework. <sighs> yeah, I, I, I agree. Let's uh, revisit this next week um, if someone has some time to bring in references then I would say we can take a note for next week that we work on this first part and bring in uh, references and papers and recommendations that others have created or definitions. And that we fill in that section next time we meet. Makes sense. All right, one last. Um... One last call for any questions or anything that people might have before we officially end this part of the meeting. Anybody have anything? No? All right. Um, if you're not on the Chaos Con planning committee, you are free to go and enjoy the rest of your day if you, if you can. Um, everybody else who's working on Chaos Con, if you will stick around, that'd be awesome. <laughs>